Today, I want to share with you the seven lessons I learned from my spiritual business while I was playing Minecraft all day with my kids. You're going to love it. Let me know that you're excited to learn these lessons by giving me a thumbs up on this video right now. All right, let's dive in. I decided to do something different for my birthday. I decided I wanted to spend time, a little time with myself before the kids woke up and some time with the kids. Now, just as some background, I had just started playing Minecraft with my kids a couple of days before my birthday. In fact, Minecraft loaded on my computer along with a couple of little lessons was a gift from my daughter. And I thought, oh, I'm going to play in my own little world. And I started that little world and I was playing around in there. And then it was time to play with the kids. So my lessons for my business came from both when I was playing myself and when I was playing with the kids. So that's what you need for background. Let's jump into it with lesson number one. Don't freak out about everything. You know, when you're playing video games, especially when you're new like me, every little noise that you think something's coming to get you and you become very, very jumpy. And I realized this is something that is in my business too. It's like this game became a mirror for my business and we know about mirrors, right? We know about how things mirror different parts in our reality back to us. So I would get very, very jumpy when things didn't go exactly how I had planned. When there was a peep from someone with a negative comment, any of those things would make me jumpy about my business, just like when I would hear lava popping or the moan of a zombie in Minecraft. It would make me very, very jumpy that maybe I was going to die. And what was so interesting is I realized that same kind of, <gasps> Fear hit, you know, of course that's supposed to happen in a video game, right? But in your business, you've got to be a bit more level than that. And I would get that same kind of, <gasps> when I would get that negative comment, when someone didn't like the service I provided, or when anything possible negative would happen in my business, I had a slow month of, <gasps> that same kind of fear hit. So I realized that I needed to really learn to respond to a situation rather than react. And I've got a video on that that I'll put somewhere up here in the cards and down in the description about responding versus reacting. This became very powerful for me as I continued to play the game is I started to learn how to better respond rather than react, to look around and see what was really going on um, to kind of take that uh, bigger picture into mind. You know you need to do the same thing in your business. Take a step back when something negative happens and really look and see what does it really mean, if anything at all. Sometimes it's just a brief lesson. You learn the lesson, you move on. Sometimes there's actually something that you need to create. Uh, <laughs> actually, there's something you need to correct. But you'll never know that if you're just in reaction mode all the time. Lesson number two, you can figure it out. So for this one, I was actually playing by myself. I wasn't playing with the kids. It was before they woke up and I started my whole new world. And I was going around trying to, you know, not die. Trying to gather all the materials together that you're supposed to get together so that you, you know, can go to bed. That's a big thing in the game is to go to sleep, which by the way, is a bonus. I didn't even think about it. That is a bonus thing. Get some good sleep. It really makes a difference. It's a big thing in the game, and it's a big thing in the life, especially if you're running a business. So that is a bonus aside right there for you. There you go. There you go. All right, so this is something I learned when I was by myself, is I could figure it out. I could figure out how to plant the crops in the game. I could figure out what I need to do so I could get my little crafting table together and make a bed so I could sleep. And I could do all that within the first day, maybe two days. After three days, like I said, sleep's a big thing in the game. After three days, you start seeing things that don't exist. Hmm. So, like I said, 
good lessons in that game. All right, so back to this lesson. All of a sudden, I was starting to adventure out more, right? That's part of the whole thing. You go on adventures. So I'm out there. I'm far away from my, quote, home base that I built for myself. And I realized I had no idea where it was. I was absolutely lost in this game world. And I couldn't get back home. And I was very distraught about this for quite some time during the day. Even when I changed over and started playing with the kids. Right? Have you been like that in your business where you started to do things and you realized you were totally out of your depth, right? It was something you were doing that was outside your wheelhouse. You weren't sure to do what to do, where to turn, anything. And it was just really frustrating. And so I'm going to switch back over to the game and tell you what I did. And I do the same thing in my business now. So in the game, we pl I've now played with the kids for a while. I'm going back to playing in my own little world again. And I thought to myself, there's coordinates in this game. I'm just going to go back to zero, zero. Right? Well, there's X, Y, and Z coordinates. So <laughs> I was going to zero on the X and zero on the Z. The Y is kind of up and down. And I don't want to be underneath the world and die that way. So I went back to 0x and 0z, or at least I was trying to get there. I figured if I just do that, maybe where I originally started the game was somewhere around 00, um, and maybe that's, I can make my way back to my quote home from there, right? So I backtracked and I, I got to the 00, or I was almost at the 00 really, and I was putting my bed down to go to sleep because it was nighttime and you must sleep unless you want to get attacked and killed by zombies and whatever else, skeletons and whatnot. And so I went to sleep and right as I was about to go to sleep, literally in the game, I turned my head and just behind me and off to the right, I saw smoke coming up from the ground. And I had put that smoke signal there and I was like, oh my God, I found my way home. I was so excited. So, how did I do that, right? I used my intuition, right? I had this intuitive hit, just go back to zero, zero. You're kind of understanding how this, these coordinate things work for this game. And if it's not there, it's not there, but at least it will be part of the journey, right? So I, I got the intuitive hit, I took that lead, and I realized even if it didn't lead me exactly where I want it to go, I would learn something along the way on the journey, which I did. I found all sorts of beautiful things. They have stuff called flower forest in this game. They're beautiful. I found amazing things along the way. I was able to pick up lava in a bucket. And so I could use it later, like all sorts of stuff. And I found the same thing happens in my business. When I'm going through and I let my intuition lead me, I take those intuitive hits and I run. They don't always necessarily lead me where I think that I want to go. But along the way, I learned so much. So even when I feel lost in my business, I take those intuitive hits and I go. Sometimes those intuitive hits lead me to like 50 different YouTube videos, right? And then I find the one that has the answer, right? Or it might lead me to those YouTube videos and I find along the way that I really need to do something completely different. And that's why I was led there. Sometimes it leads me to books, to people, all sorts of things. Use your intuition. It will lead you in the way that you want to go. Okay, lesson number three. This is sad, but I think this is the most I've paid attention in one of your videos. <laughs> <laughs> Figures the child is finally learning from the mother. Okay. So look at you talking about Minecraft. Only oh, because of Minecraft. Okay. Lesson number three. Guides are awesome i love it this is one time where i really got to work with my daughter in a very unique way where she was my guide i wasn't guiding her she was guiding me and what we got to do is get in a boat there are boats in this game and you get in the boat and she would i was terrible at driving the boat by the way that i learned in my own world but <laughs> <laughs> she would try the boat and she would just be guiding me through the world that we built for our family. And I was like, this is so amazing. Or she would guide us up and over all these mountains and she always knew how to get back to where we were trying to go. 
It is amazing when you have a guide. They can really shortcut your journey. And that's what it did for me. And of course, she taught me some techniques to fend off the monsters, so to speak, in the game. So not only can they shortcut your journey, they can help you avoid obstacles or learn how to power through those obstacles. It's important to have a guide in your journey where that journey is in the game or in your business. I even have a coach too. You know, a lot of people think, oh, you coach business owners, so you don't have a coach. Of course I have a coach. I have a coach who helps me get through those walls that I can't seem to get through myself when I feel very much blocked or I didn't even realize that what I was running into was an obstacle. Well, there's this thing called Johan's window. Um, I learned about it, I wanna say either in a sociology class I took or a psychology class I took, I can't remember which. And just so you think about it as a window frame, right, a window pane. So you know how some windows are divided into four, and you see four panes in one window. Okay, you with me so far? And you can only see through about three of those window panes. You can see through it clearly like nothing. And that way you can see some of your own stuff, right? That's what this is about. But that fourth one, that fourth one is kind of blocked from your view. And you need other people to tell you what's in that window pane. That's why it's so important to have a guide, to have a coach, someone who can really help you move through. And that's why it shortens the learning curve. That's why they can help you fend off things that are um adversive to you at the time so that was lesson number three i believe we are now at lesson number four you don't always have to take the lead right i just talked about the guy thing that's the big thing i learned is all of a sudden my daughter could lead us she could get us together as a team this is so important if you're working with a team you know a lot of times in business we want to just hire a players people who already know what they're doing and do it awesomely and so we can move on and not have to train them teach them do anything with them but here's the secret they're not going to know exactly what you want. They know what they do, and they're gonna to have to adjust to how you want it done. So there's still some of that training that has to happen. But also when hiring A players, you have to give them the opportunity to be an A player. So back to the game, my daughter's leading us, and of course I'm kind of used to being in charge. I'm the mama, so I'm a little used to being in charge but I did abdicate my position for the most part during the game. There's a couple of things I wanted done a certain way when it came to building our home in the virtual world. But other than that, I let the kids be in charge. I let the kids be in charge of going and get resources of telling me the best way to create the farms or the whatever that we needed where I could be in charge of those resources and they could go get the resources down in the mines and the caves and the whatnot. And go and venture forward and collect certain things, taking me along for the ride sometimes, other times leaving me behind. I became like a worker bee and that was so pivotal in my business because sometimes you've got to let your team take the lead let them lead, let them shine, provide feedback from a place of not knowing everything. You know, we're not designed to know everything. We need to stay in our lane, so to speak. And I know you're probably at this point where you've worn all the hats in your business. So you know a lot about a lot of things, but you don't know everything. And so when you're bringing on team, you need to let them shine in what they do. You can give them the benefit of things that you've done in the past, and then you could collaborate together, letting them mostly take the lead because this is their field of expertise, right? This is their zone of genius, not yours. Let them take the lead and you offer suggestions. And I know it's gonna feel like a bit of role reversal, like it did with me, the kids taking over in the game and me being like the little kid, but it's so important. It's not only good for their growth, 
as they become A players in your business, you're developing your own A players, but it also becomes as a good growth point for you being a leader in your business by leading from behind, by allowing other people to shine. All right, so before we get on to the rest, and we've got a few more to go. I think, where are we at? Number four, we've got five, six, and seven to go. I want to let you know that I have a class called a Banish Business Overwhelm. It is a master class. You're going to love it. I would love to see you in that master class so you can learn all those things that might still be a little bit overwhelming in business <laughs> and how you can get rid of them. So let's move on now that I did my pitch, right? Let's move on to lesson number five. I already did lesson number five. I combined it with lesson number one because, guys, even though I write these things down, I want to give them to you in order. Sometimes I get so excited and ahead of myself. So definitely, I think I give it to you in lesson number two, actually, that you could do it yourself and use your intuition. Lesson number five was use your intuition. It just does not lead you astray. So enjoy you got a lot in that one lesson didn't you because you got use your intuition you can figure it out and about sleep actually that was an amazing one all right let's move on to lesson number six time is relative yeah time is relative you've probably heard this before because you've heard of this guy what was his name albert albert einstein his theory of relativity but time is actually relative. So think about it this way. When I'm playing the game, and I learned this even before I played Minecraft with the kids, I had a gaming incident when I was younger. When my daughter was probably about two or three years old and she's in her early 20s now. So this has kept me away from video games for a while with my gaming incident. What was my gaming incident? I decided I wanted to play this new game that just come out and you could buy it, put it on your computer and play it. It was called World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft 3, my child informs me. So I was excited. I wanted to play this game. I thought it'd be really cool and fun because that's right. I played it while I was in college before my kid was born and I would play it back then they didn't the internet wasn't set up for that kind of thing so we would play in a computer lab on campus while these other guys i was the only girl there i think i was kind of a little nerdy girl but anyway i would play with all of these guys and we would play in the afternoon when pretty much no one was using the computer lab and we knew the it guy and he was playing too and it was lots of fun and so world of warcraft 3 had just come out and by God, I was going to play that game. I went actually to my office at the time, put it in there because I just told everyone I was going to the office that Saturday afternoon, put it in there, started playing and playing and playing and playing. And I was having so much fun and it was the most delightful experience. And then all of a sudden my husband and child show up. I'm thinking, why are they here? Gosh, are they coming for lunch? No, no, no. It was close to midnight. I had lost an entire day playing the game. An entire day. And when you think about it, when you're doing something fun, and this happened to with Minecraft, it was like, I'm playing, the kids are playing, and all of a sudden my husband said, I'm like, dinner? <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm losing time again, or am I? Time is accelerating because you're having so much fun. Right? So think, I'm thinking back to a couple of days prior to that moment of my birthday and losing time playing Minecraft. A couple of days prior to that, I had to renew my driver's license. I was at the DMV for three hours. It felt like I was there 10 hours, right? Time moved slower, right? So remember, time is relative. So Push this ever into your business now. When you're having fun, things go so fast. Time just zooms by. So make sure you're making time in your business, doing those activities that you find really exciting to do. And the day just floats by and you're having fun and you're staying high vibe. That is the big thing that I've learned 
with time being relative, it's about that vibe. And when you're staying high vibe, you're staying in flow and things just seem to happen effortlessly. This is how you're going to build effortlessness into your business. But when time feels really, really slow and drawn out, things seem really, really hard because all of a sudden you become very, very low vibe. So think about those activities that you do in your business that brings you to that low vibe point and as quickly as possible, delegate them away. Or even before you delegate them, see if they need to be done in the first place. Sometimes we're busy just to be busy and there are things that don't need to be done, certainly not by you or anyone else. So take a good long look at that. It's a beautiful lesson the game has taught me is that time is relative and staying in that vibe that I want, that really beautiful high vibe that happens when time is moving so much faster. That's where you want to be too because that's where the creativity comes from and all the awesome, awesome ideas. Okay, before we get to my last and final tip, tip number seven, which you're gonna love. I hope that you've loved the six tips so far. If so, give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already. And of course, I would love for you to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you'll know when my next video is coming out, which will be all about, hmm, should I still be in business? Is it time for me to shut this thing down? It's gonna be a little controversial and a little edgy and I know that you're going to love it. It'll give you some really good tips to figure out what to do if you have that thought in mind. All right, so let me get to tip number seven. I'm very excited, are you excited? I'm excited! Tip number seven. And perhaps one of the better tips other than making sure that you sleep <laughs> happens when you play but it keeps you in this high vibe moment right we just talked about how time's relative things go much so much faster when you're having fun build in time to play i'm so serious about this some of the things i've been thinking about in my business should i do this should i do that and i just played all day and all of a sudden the answers were there it gave my subconscious mind time to put things together and bring them into my consciousness because my conscious mind wasn't trying to sift through it itself. It was devoted over to play. And don't you know, I know you've noticed this before too. I know you have, trust me, I know you have. Like you think about something that you wanna do and then you start doing something else and you, you really wanna get back to focusing on that problem, but you. You have to focus your attention elsewhere, whether it's cooking or in a conversation or whatever. And then all of a sudden, boom, the answer comes. You know it's happened. You know it's happened. So think of a time when it's happened because <laughs> you know it did. All right, so that happens with such more frequency when you play, right? When you play, that happens with enormous frequency because you're whole conscious mind is really geared to and really involved in that world. So it gives the subconscious time and frankly space without the conscious mind going yeah, 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 to work it out. Okay. So what do I recommend for play? Well, whatever play is for you, that's what I recommend. So for me, I realized it's, I love playing video games. I had pulled myself back from it because of my video game incident. But now I've gotten back into it and it's so much fun. <laughs> I've learned so much from starting to play again. And what I do recommend is whatever it is that you do for play, whether it's run out and kick a ball, go hiking in nature, playing games. And I do, I don't want you to think of this as working out or anything like that. I want it to be whatever is fun for you, whatever is play for you. And for some of you, you're gonna to have to rediscover what's play for you because you've totally lost touch with that part of yourself, that part that can be kid-like and silly. Reintegrate that part of yourself in and play. One of the things I decided to do is to take about mm, six to 10 hours a week just devoted to play. 
just about to play. Not, quote, family time, though play could include family time. Not to exercising or anything like that, but actual play, silly, laughing, rolling on the floor, all that kind of stuff that you did when you were a kid, because it just reignites the creativity, it refreshes you, it renews you. So I really put a challenge out to you to play. Put the time, it sounds so crazy, put the time in your schedule to play. Make play time a time that is as important as any other appointment that you have. All right, I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. Let me know, are you going to incorporate play time into your schedule? Which of the seven lessons really spoke to you the most? Can't wait to hear your comments. And in the meantime, peace, joy, love to you.